Well, hello there. It's the Grammar Slammer. Oh my goodness. I am so happy to be here again today. And today's a little bit different because I have just finished doing a, a video in a totally different series. It was actually in the Essential Functions series. And as part of that series, we actually touched on the conditionals. Now, the conditionals, it's, you know, the, the Essential Function series focuses mostly on vocabulary. Vocabulary that you can use to do something. That's why I call it functions. Yes, function, a function to do something. However, this little grammar section, it was almost pure grammar. And I thought it necessary to do a separate introduction just for what we did as part of that and prepare this introduction just for the grammar aspect. So that is why this intro is actually for the Grammar Slammer. All right, now what is it that we're looking at today? Today, we're actually gonna be looking at the conditionals. The conditionals are important. And again, as you can see here, you can assume why? Why do you need the conditionals at all? Well, first of all, you can use them for diplomatic language. The language you use to be agreeable, to be inclusive, to be a little more human in the way you talk to people. And hopefully this will also help you to get things done within a work context. However, the conditionals are not only relevant for let's say diplomatic language or negotiating or bargaining, but also for maybe even describing processes. Yes, to describe how things work, you know, what uh, is necessary for another thing to happen. Yes, condition meaning bedingung, yes, and an outcome meaning an agabeness right? Conditioners are usually framed within what we call if clauses. If one thing happens, then another thing happens as an outcome. These if clauses are usually separated by a comma, which means if I have enough money, comma, I will buy a new jacket, right? So if I have enough money, that is the condition, then the comma, and then the outcome, I will buy a new jacket right? These are conditionals. Of course, you can also switch these, whereas you have the outcome first and the if afterwards, right? Just as useful, just as good. It's just a matter of style. If you decide to do it that way, then you can. But um, if you're putting the outcome first before the if clause, then you don't really need the comma, right? All right. Now, this is just an introduction of the conditionals and um I, you know i'm gonna you know switch over to the to the to the other video soon however just so you know what it is and you can recognize probably why it might be valuable to you the conditionals comprise four types four not three but four there is a zero conditional which is actually just a statement of fact right in the section we will look at how that is built up built up and also some examples so we explore the form and the meaning and after this if you feel as if you need more of course you can always book a one-to-one -one or you know get the you know access to the full course itself that includes questions that you can do on your own so the zero conditional just looks at general facts for example water boils at 100 degrees celsius the the first conditional looks at the use of will, whereas you speak of something that is both possible and probable, right? And it's that's pretty clear, so you use the word will, right, in that case. The second conditional looks at things that are a little more improbable, yes, or maybe um, that are hypothetical. That's the word I used, hypothetical or imagined. And in that case, you, you use what is called the unreal past. Very similar to what you also do in German. And you will see from looking at the form, looking at the examples, exploring the meaning, that it's very similar. So it should be quite 
simple to learn. The good thing about learning these tools, you know, these little building blocks of grammar, is that every time you learn a new one, you go out into the world feeling much more confident with this new tool that you have discovered. Maybe you even discover that you knew this already, because a lot of these concepts also occur or are used in your own language, which is German, I assume. Right now, the last thing that we're going to do in this blog looking on the or looking at the conditionals is the third conditional, which is not really something that I recommend all the time, but it's nice. You know, it's, it, it's a playful way where you're actually using the language to speculate on a past event. What would have happened if something else had happened? And in that case, it's a little more complicated. And um, however, we go into depth of how it's formed, looking at also examples and as usual, you know, exploring the meaning and practice, right? So I hope you find this interesting. I hope you take part. And again, this is just an introduction of the conditionals, which is pure grammar here. As you can see on the slide, however, it says diplomatic language, which is just one of the things for which you can use the conditional. And I am looking forward to seeing you there.